Hello and welcome um, to our slightly last minute uh, world building stream. I um, hope you can hear us all out there. Um, unfortunately, we have had a little bit of illness, so we're not able to do a full episode four of Patchwork this week. Um, so Tara and I thought, well, why don't we jump in and do another world building exercise, which, uh, <laughs> yes, okay, Jabber. <laughs> I've, I've, I've thor thoroughly tranquilized Terror. <laughs> um, Where did this coffee cup come from? <laughs> oh, God. I'm obviously not paying your missus enough to keep you away from the coffee. <laughs> So, um, Terror doesn't actually know what we're doing either because this has nope. been a little bit last minute, but um, I was just explaining to him that I think sometimes with it being last minute is hopefully be more creative because we um, are not going to have too much preconceived ideas. Obviously, I've got bits and pieces, but what I thought we would do for today is try and put a bit more meat on the bones of the particular part of the world that we are journeying in at the moment, which is a landmass called Kuan. Mm. Now, really, the only thing that I have very heavily fleshed out is this little settlement here, which is called Diliati's Well, um, which uh, the party visited a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Now, I have some other bits and pieces. Uh, oh, no, Dan, n no ideas are terrible. Um, it, the, the, last, the last one was abs... <laughs> <laughs> Very good nuanced point there, Ter. Um, <laughs> but l this is why I love doing this, because there are no ideas that are bad ideas, because even if the idea itself's not coming forward, it might spark something in one of us or somebody else in chat, and that's how it was the last time with, um, with Jabber. Uh, it was really yeah. good. So... The things that I thought we would try and start with, and we'll just see how we go. We'll maybe just go for a couple of hours. We'll maybe not do a full three-hour session this time, because. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. Um, what I thought we could maybe start on was in Vorich, which is a city that the party has travelled from, and I've not oh. put I've not put much detail into this at all at the moment. So we could start off with. You know what does it sort of look like, and I don't mean a big detailed, um, <clears throat> yeah, slightly further north than. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh. Um, yeah, I've not I've not thought in great detail what it looks like. You know, is it a stone walled city? Is it a f you know a, a, a sort of a quite wide open? So we can talk about that. The only thing I've really put in place in it that they have a city watch that is called the Sea Shields because it's obviously mm. coastal. But I've not put, uh, you know, what sort of governments in place other than there is a very vague government between the other it and the other three cities that is an alliance almost like NATO is in modern times where... They're not a single country, but they're very closely allied, and there is sort of like a joint force starting to be um, formed. Uh -huh. um, and then we could move on to the other cities um, if if we if we got that far. Or indeed, I have not named the island to the north and south of Kuin either, um, and and things. So um, the other um, three town uh, cities anyway are. Um, oh, I'm putting them on the wrong one. Ancoin, which again is a coastal city. We have Marshall's Destination, um, nice. which is where there is a world um, encompassing um, road, which is called the Merchant's Progress, and Marshall's Destination is the end point of it, and it goes through all the other continents in the world. So it's a very important place um, for trade and merchants, but that's really as far as uh, I've got with that at the moment as well. And also there is Barmui, um, again. They're all coastal um, cities. There are other towns and things that I have not yet uh, detailed and things which, so if we again, depending on how far we get, we can maybe get into that as well. Yeah. So, 
Um, just like with uh, Jabber the last time, I just thought, just spitball and stick things down on a Word document and just see where we go from there. Yeah. So, is there anything in that to begin with? And also, if there's something else that you think, oh no, I'd actually, I'd like to go here. Feel free to, to shout um, if, if you want to jump to one of the other things I've mentioned. Uh, uh, nope. Okay. I was thinking, uh, I was looking for that map anywhere. You probably won't have... I, um, oh, okay. You might not have access to it yet, but um, because I'm okay. on stream now, I'm not going to go into all the back, because there's other secret stuffs and passwords and things. Okay. So um, it's fine. Sorry, I should have given you that beforehand. But, no, uh, no, it's fine. Um, but I can um, bring it up again for you on stream. Yeah, because I'm thinking, like, looking at the location, like, we don't know anything about that island up there. Yep. But it's, you know... It seems to be in between, like, the sea and a lightly forested, maybe, farmland areas. Mm -hmm. What would that be? It's a port town. Hmm. So, obviously, Invarach itself is on the mainland. I know the, the sort of icon goes up onto the, to the island, but it's actually yeah. the, the bottom is where, where it's located. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. I just uh, just wanted to do, to be clear for that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I don't know. It could be just like it's a port town. So mm -hmm. it could be a trade town, maybe, or maybe it's been something that once was a naval base and then kind of grew into a city. Mm hmm. I don't know. I like that. Um, I, let, let's go with that to begin with. Um, yeah. So, well, yeah, coffee. Ex naval base. So, yeah. do you think this was something from? Was it a, an offshoot from one of the other cities that grew into a city itself? Was it pirates that have become legitimate? Um, mm. Was it? Um, I know. Don't, don't know. Like a some some. I don't know. Um, um. What could it be? Yeah, maybe maybe it's an offshoot. Like they built the naval base, and then the naval base just grew. Okay. Or maybe we could have that the, the sort of the the, uh, the the pirate entry like that was, like the the, the with that island there. The pirates could basically just, if ever they got attacked, they could just circle around, circle around, and then crush them in that strait. Yeah, and then there'd be sort of lots of cannonade and stuff like that along yeah. the the front that would be able to bombard and give extra protection. Yeah, okay. and then and then also with the 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 mountain below it, they would also like have most land routes sort of locked into their own advantage, and then after time, it all sort of grew. As they needed things, food and whatnot. Yeah. Because this is one of the things is we probably not go too deep into the history and things. Because um, yeah. Because what this would then do is hopefully link to a future world building exercise that all we focus on is the actual detailed history of what happened here and stuff like that. So that that's why this is is going to be like broad brushstrokes. But hopefully yeah. in the series we'll come back and then we'll do a real proper intricate deep dive and then those yeah. are the things like i was saying at the beginning you can come back on that one and you know you can think about it over time and then we'll maybe actually then that will actually form part of the history of the world um, and we'll do a big sort of world anvil um post about the, all the history and stuff like that so i love that so x pirate base that um slowly became um, legal. A town structure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice city over time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then that would and, and legitimate in the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
one would then imagine also like that the oldest uh, stores and buildings in town would be like whorehouses and bars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And gunsmiths. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is it really legitimate or is it a facade? Hmm. Now there's, um, and I, when I I ask this specifically, I mean the actual proper governments it's going to have an underbelly a probably a bigger underbelly than other cities of its type but is it genuinely trying to be legitimate hmm one would think that all the upper classes would have like a history then of uh, like these were the highest ranked pirate families and so then even if they've tried to come from that they all have like an a, a history of doing all those things so they wouldn't really think of it as as wrong as other places that might have history uh, storied backgrounds of religious figures or uh, military figures because these all like are people that stem from piracy so what well, i suppose that... i suppose that, that my question to that is is how long ago are we talking because obviously mm. most of us if you go back yeah three four five centuries we will have murderous rogues and vikings and you know all that sort of stuff even in my own family because like i've got like shetland background that's danish so there was like lots of viking connections there i'm not just being pointing at the 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 token scandic Um, (laughs) (laughs) so i think that's maybe my next uh yeah, well, so do I, Dan, actually, because that's part of my surname comes from it, actually. So uh, there we I go. Have that's something else I, we've got in common. I have really Spanish cool. ancestry. We've done horrible things all over the world. Yeah. So uh, that's really my next thing is, is that may or may not be true, depending on how... I mean, obviously, we're talking about the time from a wee pirate ship to a few pirate ships to yeah. a small village, to a fledgling town, and all the way up to now, it's a, a reasonably big city. Yeah. I mean, I'm not talking a metropolis, but no. I I imagine this place to maybe have two, three hundred thousand people sort of living there. Um, so you know, it's not it's not small. We would probably no, no. in modern Europe, we would probably more call it a large town rather than a city. But it's, yeah, yeah. it's going to be a city here. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Obviously, mm. there are many long-lived races because the, the races here, for the most part, fall between traditional lines as far as uh, longevity yeah. is concerned. So, um, well, if we're talking then the shift over, like the growing of the town, them being pirates and them converting, like we could probably say. I mean, there are real world world examples of towns that turn into proper, like. Oh places. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, but then we're only talking humans. I don't know. Should should we? I kind of like. I'm gonna again. This is a collaboration, so I'm just spitballing. Yeah. I kind of like the thought of us having a government that's trying to be legitimate, and maybe yeah. maybe it is mostly of shorter lived races so yeah. humans and dwarves and um halflings gnomes and such probably be gnomes mm-hmm. of their shipbuilding yeah but maybe the 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 large underbelly is very much elven ah yeah yeah and I don't mean drow i i just i i in this world i see drow and elves as just being yeah, it's yeah, yeah, the same thing. Yes, there yeah. are there are there are many different hues of, of races and things like that. But I don't actually see the drow being the bad ones and the thing. Yeah, I, th- yeah, yeah. I think they're there are like most places and humans in real life, they're neutral as a race and there are good, bad, and indifferent uh, amongst all of them. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like the thought here that it's the elves that are the underbelly because they're longer lived and maybe some at the top there actually remember the very old days whereas the the humans and the halflings especially are like several generations and they've kind of lost 
whilst they understand yeah, the yeah. history, but they, they've never actually lived it directly. Yeah, yeah. Does and that also sound good? That... No, no, yeah, I agree. It also yeah. becomes to that thing where, like, well, it's easier to buy something than to take it from you. Yeah. And then, you know, but for the elves, it's like, I've been to see my entire life. That's a hundreds of years. And I do like the idea of not having the drow as evil. No, exactly, yeah. Uh, it also creates... Some might be, but it, not, not oh, a course. standard, yeah. Yeah, it does create something. I was working on some mod project, and I was going to add drow, but drow is neutral. And then, because then you create can create a very interesting sort of uh, African aesthetic to elves. Yeah. That's elves oh, yeah. for another stream. Yeah, absolutely. Um, very much so. Um... Right. <laughs> and and like Elven names, at least by Tolkien, was like inspired by like Welsh names and stuff, right? I think. I think so, yeah. Yeah, so then we could have like I real mean, Welsh names. Galadriel and, and things like that. It sounds very like Arthurian. And obviously yeah. a lot of the Arthurian stuff is actually Welsh rather than English, uh, really. Yeah. But I mean, now we can add like real like Welsh pirates as elves. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um do you want to give that um maybe there's a, a main do you want to name a thieves guild? Are we ready for that? Nah, let's let's build more around it first. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hope so, Dan, as well. It's like yeah. there is there is always this sort of slight uncomfortableness with D D as well as like oh the black ones are really evil and yeah not one, and I, I i've never been totally comfortable with that at all no um, same here it's um i mean i know it comes from the 60s where things were uh, 70s yeah. where things weren't as enlightened but i mean that could have been changed more over time and um, so yeah. there's no reason to stop us doing that um, yeah <laughs> now jabber I know where you're going with this because they live yeah. in in Atlanta down under. Uh, yeah. That that is that is an old D and D meme. <laughs> yeah. Where women glow and men plunder. Yes. <laughs> the joys of a game based on imagination, absolutely, Dan. Yeah. Um, we can always try and do do a bit uh, to to do. This. It's not about being like super needing to sort the world out or anything but no. uh, there's no reason for things to be exactly as they are yeah <laughs> sorry jabber <laughs> steal your thunder <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, if you want to play a draw with that accent I mean... <laughs> yeah there's nothing stopping you playing an Australian draw <laughs> I know that when uh, Chris Perkins uh, he always has draw as speaking French for some reason yeah for some reason. And it's like a really sort of... Overt yeah, sort of... Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Absolute caricature of, of a yeah. French accent rather than a genuine attempt to, to do a French accent. I've never quite yeah. understood it, but... I don't mind it, don't get me wrong, but I've never quite understood where it's coming from. Anyway, um, so, Thieves, Parrot... Um, <clears throat> So they are actively trying to yeah trying to thwart um, the the government uh, yeah and return to uh, the old ways yeah those of them becomes like a racial component then for like these old elves who want things to go back before the humans messed everything up. But the short, shorter lived races, anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Which also right... fits into, like, Elven. Yeah, sacre bleu. Yeah. <laughs> 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 See, now, you, now you've got me thinking about an old British uh, sitcom called A Low A Low, which was filled with <laughs> dreadful <laughs> French accents. <laughs> oh. 
like, yeah. I, I, although it was amazing, it yeah. made me laugh uh, a great deal. And if you've never seen it, Jabber, I definitely advise you to have a look at that on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> but be warned, it's like the 80s. So again, some of it yeah. is probably a wee bit dodgy with the the hindsight of uh, of future, but <laughs> yeah, a lot of it's quite funny. Yeah, and it was World War Two, right? Yes, it was set. It yeah. was it was set in France, um, and it was about a cafe that was part of the French Resistance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, you've seen very little EU telly. Well, that's that's a that's a a, a, yeah. good, a good example of the nineteen eighties. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry, getting sidetracked again. Yes. Let's see, we're trying to turn <clears throat> to the old ways of piracy. Anything else you yeah. want to add about that as a broad, broad brush talk at the moment? Uh, I don't know. Thieves active. Uh, Maybe they no. have one member that is deeply entwined in their hierarchy, but doesn't publicly admit to being so and is actually maybe part of the legitimate government uh so he's an informant for the government no 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 the other way around so he oh. he's pretending to be a legitimate person a member of the government but actually he's quite high up the hierarchy of the thieves guild yeah, yeah. ah yeah, so then the Thieves Guild is also then com completely, like, hidden. They don't have any public face as well. Uh, yeah, we can do that. No. Yeah. That would also... But if that would then also be, like, a thing that... They know that this is the elven element in the city, then there would probably also be a lot of, sort of, hatred towards the elves, then. Well, that's something that we can think about, definitely. Yeah. It's, it's a possibility. Because I'm thinking that that high-ranking member of the guild could actually be publicly quite um publicly quite um aggressive towards trying to to thwart and and root mm. out the guild but obviously and then might be a, a favorite of the general population but uh, in yeah, secret yeah. in secret they are actually like number one or two or three in in the hierarchy yeah, yeah. Um, and they're consolidating power with public acts yeah Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's like, oh, these guys, I just found out about these guys, we need to get them. And that increases the power. I'm just putting guild now for, um, just for ease, but once we actually name it, I'll go back and, and just change that to whatever name we decide to yeah. have. But I do like that. Um, so... Let's cut back a second, because what we have probably done is kicked off a bit quickly in... Sorry, I'm just going in a bit there. Um, no, a minute. What are we going to do? Well, have we decided what type of government they have there? Is well, it a council? Let's start with some buildings and stuff like that. Mm. So, you have decided, so there's lots of... Again, I'm not doing it in any order. Mm -hmm. um, cannonade. Yeah. On the shore front. Facing C. word okay um do you think in in terms of geography do you think this is like 
a beach that's got a river coming out of it and they're using the river naturally as the bit of the heart mouth of, for the harbour is it um maybe a beach between two sort of bluffs and they've built up and across to the bluffs to use them as as almost like um city walls from the side and then have built like a harbour out from them and then have like wooden harbour structures out into the deeper water. I like that one. Okay. So the then... cannon the cannonade are maybe then on two wings on the top of the cliff buffs on the left and right looking out to sea. Yeah yeah. yeah. And then because it it also creates like when they first built the bases was hidden behind the bluffs. So then the old town, the first buildings that would be built would then be behind there when they were hiding. And then as they grew and didn't need to hide, they grew out into the more obvious areas. So, God, I keep trying to edit this uh, Word document on the stream (laughs) instead of of on the actual. So if I'm going like this, it's because I keep, I've got it on, on the stream there, but the actual document's there and I keep trying to. It's in the wrong place. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> why did that happen? Uh, Oop. Undo. So, what I'm going to do there is city built on a wide sandy bay with two high cliff tops, uh, two bluffs, I think I'll just call them, I know what I mean when I say a bluff in that way. Framing the bay, Um, so strong stone sea walls. Yeah. It's a lot of cool things to have there as well, then. Like, you can have storied uh, bridges that families may have built. Hmm. And also, like, the old sea walls. Uh, like, there will be cracks in the wall from cannonballs and from spells and stuff. Absolutely. Uh, Um, wooden piers. So it's got wooden piers that have been built out from the bay into the deeper waters to stock and repair ships. Um, yeah. That's good. Because then that, that way it then turns into like, you know, the, the walkways and stuff so you can dock many, many ships and things like that. Because obviously I yeah. do see this as being a, quite a large area. So you, you could have several large ships, if not, you know, multiple sort of medium to small size ships um, all behind these large stone walls. That's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. So then there would be. Hmm. Okay, so now they have a large need for wood. So one would think that they would probably get a lot of wood from the deeper forest down in the south beyond the mountains. Or is that too far? I'll bring bring this back up again. So this whole area is is wood um, here. Yeah. Um, but yes, I think, and I think that's probably one of the the merchant things that, that I think even when I was when I was discussing uh, Diliati's well, um, Diliati Eti's well, sorry, um, forestry was one of the main. It was forest. It was forestry, and it was um, furs and and things like that were the sort of two main things above, and also the mining with. Uh, Crazy little hermits like hair here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sure. Um, 
Oh, my oh bears, my dearest <laughs> Billy. What am I going to do without <laughs> Billy? <laughs> Spoilers. <Yeah. laughs> oh no. Um so yeah, and and although although this is the bit on the map that I've marked as being one gigantic forest, it's not to say there's no sources of wood um along this stretch, but I see that maybe that maybe certainly around um in Vorif, there's very f- little wood because yeah. so much of it has already been used for the needs of the city. But I also see this bit up here as being the majority of the... Sorry, I can't stop those bloody pop-ups happening. Mm-hmm. The the majority of the for, uh, of the farmland in, in this. So top right and bottom left is where I see most of the farmland being in this island. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Um, so, so absolutely, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So we've got that. We've got that. We've got that. We've got that. Uh, so let me split this up a little bit more into <clears throat> headings. Um, feel free to just keep talking whilst I'm I'm just editing the document. A little bit um, to give us other headings. Uh, mm-hmm. That is fine. So, what what's the next thing that you think that we should go on and discuss? The government type. Government. Yep, that's fine. Um, geography. There we go. Why that was. There we go. Um, so, where do we go here? Sorry. Oh, just um, start talking about how, what you're thinking oh. about as far as government types and things like that. Um, talking about. Let's see. I imagine that there would have been. Yeah, council makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well. I'm just wondering if it's the head of every uh, family or if it's the head of every, uh, let's see, where's my figures? There they are. Uh, crew. Like uh, like they would have an elected official of a, 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 uh, a crew, so to speak. Like pirates would elect the, the captain. And so then in the government type of the city, like... But this is the area of this like crew. Do you do you see what I'm getting at? I do. Like... I I do like it, but and it is a big but. It it does feel a nice. little bit too much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, that, that, that <laughs> made me laugh too much. Um, <laughs> it sounds a little bit too much like Luskin. Yeah, like that's also true. Now, I know there's a very good reason because it's built off like historical yeah. models as well. So it's not I know yeah. it's I know it's not coming from a just copying, but <laughs> for that reason that other people may not take that nuance, I would it doesn't mean to say we can't have a council no. though. Um, no, no, no. But let's say when it's become maybe, maybe uh, that's the history. Yeah, but yeah, when yeah. it's become legitimate, it's just become an elected council. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they legitimize, like they feel more legitimate and uh, as part of an honest government if they have an elected official. Yeah. Or a group of them. So how many I sit on the council? Now we're talking a population of. I'd say two, 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 two to three hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's a city. I don't know. Like we could say, I'm kind of I'm I'll, I'll see what I'm thinking. Um, the city probably would have districts, yeah. uh, Dan. Absolutely, um, that's probably something that we could get to as well. Well, why don't let uh, what I'm thinking here? I'm thinking a council of thirteen Mm-mm. because then there's always a casting vote, and what that maybe is is. I'm kind of thinking like 
there's 12 elected officials and then when their term runs out one of the 12 is elected to be the leader for the next term to make the 13th seat ah yeah yeah so there's uh so there will be so then there'll be like yeah and then we could say there's six districts in the in the city but they each vote two two officials Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah i'm really just doing that more so that it's slightly easier and we don't have to then go all the way down and like design 12 separate districts <laughs> <laughs> it is sl- slight laziness um but Who's again prominent citizen in this district <laughs> 12 districts in a city of three hundred thousand would be quite a lot yeah, yeah absolutely dan smarter not harder uh, I sh- you're right, I shouldn't apologise. <laughs> I take it back. Um, yes. So, an elected council of 12. Mm-hmm. Um, a 13th member um, elected from the previous sitting council yeah. to lead. Yeah. So how what what's the term? Uh like we're we're talking we were thinking that it was quite a long time ago that they shifted away from pirates. Uh but sorry, sorry, just to be clear, I'm meaning what do you think the term of the election is is sorry, is what I was meaning. Oh, okay. I thought you were mean meaning what they the councillors were called. No, 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 sorry. More more. what I'm thinking is when they're elected to the council, how long is it between elections? Mm. Like, is it annually? You know, every two years, every five years, every ten years, whatever. Hmm. That's just... Wait. I don't know. Like, it's... Uh... could say 10 years maybe as it then uh, like it's a long time for humans but it's a shorter time for like longer lived races and so you can get through more important things and you have a more stable long lived uh, government rather than having it annually because then every year there's basically a new council that wants to do something or we have very short lived ones because then there's never enough time to do something I kind of like that, but there's one slight problem with it. That would mean that one of the 12 would be in government for 20 years. Yeah. What if we did, what What if we halved it and did it as a five-year term and then that would yeah. make the 13th member being there for 10 years? And that would yeah. still give some of that stability because it's like... You know, it it's because you're going to have the five year term for the council, and then they've got to agree to elect one of them to, to carry on, and then yeah. they're going to be the one guiding the next five years to twelve. So there is still a continuity there, sort of linking one to the next. Yeah. Um, so elected council of twelve with a five year term. And it would usually only be lessened by uh, a fiver, sorry. Five, <laughs> it's big fat fingers I am always making. As you've seen in our Discord, I make typing errors. And it's ten times worth of them typing on my phone because it quite regularly types three and four buttons at once. Yeah. And I just go, <laughs> same. And I look at it and go, that looks like gibberish. Everyone will think you're drunk. Yeah. <laughs> And that's only true, yeah. like, one out of, like, every three times. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, 13th member I'll elect from the previous city council to lead for the next five years. Yeah, that the reason there's no bot is is because Dombro sets that up. I've no idea how to, and he's the one that's ill, unfortunately. 
<laughs> I literally don't know how to set the bot up. Uh, so apologies. Um, apologies. Yeah. I can't run it. There you go. I don't, oh, feel, okay. I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel so bad then, Dan. <laughs> His machine. Yes, it's a ghost in the machine. <laughs> um, that's fine. Um, so, geography, I'm going to link a bit of geography there, is what's the government building like in the city? It would be up on, like, one of the bluffs, one would think, or, like, a secure location. See, I'm I'm thinking the bluffs are more just sort of military. It is just it's, mm. there's not an awful lot of actual buildings up there. It is kind of just like fortifications and cannons pointing out uh, to the to the sea beyond the seawall. Yeah. Um. We would, because then, damn it. I'm thinking that would probably be in like some very open and like accessible location. The idea being that when it was the pirates who ruled with their uh, crews and whatnot, they picked the most secure locations, like the most uh, easily defended locations to fight off each other and anybody else. But then when they wanted a more elected and uh, honest government, they instead picked a very accessible and a central location mm -hmm. to make a statement about we're not we're not hiding in a corner with a gun out. We're sort of open here for you to sort of show up and be a part. So, what if the council chamber and associated administration? kind of like the idea of it being like a building from street level but yeah. when you look up its roof is like the upturned hull of a Corsair ship or something <laughs> yeah there would be yeah and, it, and it's like the, some historical ship that they put there, like the, the, yes, the it, it, it was it was sunk and it was recovered and turned into this. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was... But it was sunk due to some sort of valiant um, yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what? Do you, that's the thing for you and chat to think about is what's the ship named because that will be what the building is known as at least yeah. colloquially, even if it's not its official name. Um, yeah, 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 and like. And the name will also be like an a, a uh, like a local bravery thing, like like you mentioned before, like Arthurian legend, which like just the name means something, like uh, like just like this ship name will mean something to the people there. What are you typing? Council chamber and sorry, I've just not see. This is where you've got to remind <laughs> me. Jabber, Jabber was very good at doing this when I did it. Him saying, "You've not scrolled down, you dick." <laughs> <laughs> Jabber's got an idea of going with Jormungand. Does that mean Jor anything? Does that mean anything, or am it's I being... the sea serpent from Norse mythology? If I'm remembering that correctly. I'm showing my uh, lack of of knowledge. <laughs> it's it's fine. Let's see. And let's see, Jordan. Yeah. So like in most. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Midgard serpent. Yeah. Oh, like the world serpent. Is that the world serpent? Yeah. Hercules fought it. Yes. Uh, Is that the same one that was in um, God of War? No idea. Because there was a world, Wait. a world snake in that. Hercules fought the world snake. I mean, he fought other snakes. 
beasts. But I don't remember if you fought specifically the Jormungand. That's... That's like... I think you fought something else. Getting sidetracked again. <laughs> like, I know... <sighs> there are many legends of Hercules and many things. Yes. It's really cool. If you've not played the most recent God of War... It's, oh, it's from it's, that. It's really, really cool. I thought Hercules died in the third one. You kill him. Don't want to spoil stuff if you've not played it. It's, it was, it's it is an absolutely excellent game. The, the the most recent God of War. Nah. <laughs> I mean, they're the same person, Jabber. <laughs> some, yeah. Some blonde guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so. I like the name, but I don't think that's what we're going to call the ship. <laughs> Hercules. No. Uh, yeah. Hold of a famous ship acting as a roof. Uh, I think as well is the thirteenth member uh, has. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the captains. So I see basically the upside down captain's quarters in the hull have been turned into the personal chambers of the... Yeah. The 13th member. So... so yeah. Um, Dan, we we're trying to name a famous pirate ship that the the government building we've decided is a sort of long rectangular building and the um what culture is the ship from when you say when you say culture are you meaning like race or well that that's part of basically part of what we're building here so the culture is the very early stages of the the roots of this now city, when it might just yield and blow. God sakes, chopper. That's ah, a good name. Um, we got a winner like that. So I I'm maybe seeing that this is like again this pr could be a, a previous. Oh wait, all right, okay. Well, I mean, most of here tends to be quite Celtic in, in nature, so Irish, Welsh, Scottish, but um, there could definitely be some Viking influences as well. Nordic, uh, Scandinavian. Yeah. Let's see. But it could also be just a sort of classical piratey name as well, like, you know, Long, yeah. Longbeard's Curse or, you know, something. <laughs> you know, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be... Uh, Let's see. I am going to Google pirate historical pirate boat names. Yeah. Uh, wait. Let's see. The thirteen invasions. Famous pirate ships in history. Queen Anne's Revenge. See, I like a mm -hmm. name. I, I like a name like that. Something like that. Uh, the fancy, the fortune. Drag do. But I do. I do sort of like a name like yeah, like because Drake. Ooh, okay. Why don't we do... Yeah, I like that. Drake do. But I, and I, I may deliberately bastardise the, the spelling and stuff sometimes. Because I've done that for some of the things. Um, yeah, and, and then it could be... Would the Drake do them... Blah, 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 blah. Would that ship then be like an elven 
ship in design, like an elven pirate ship. I don't, I don't, I don't see those. Sort of, I think this is a. It's not about racial things. These are no, this, no, no. This is a singular culture. Um, so this is foreign. Yeah. Um, so. Break D. Vrig D. Yes. Oh, so why don't we even use the uh, pronunciation? The pronunciation. So what? What would Fury be in Welsh then? Uh, if we called it Vrig D's Fury, but using what? What would be the the Welsh? Um... Would it be like that? The captain was a like a black dragonborn captain pirate. Bush. There you go. Yeah. And it's like the black dragons. Kinner died. And how would Doesn't... you how would you pronounce that? Yeah. D isn't isn't. <clears throat> no fucking clue. Yeah. <laughs> Kin did. Oh well. Wait. Like so. Like, what was the? So a double D is a V. At least. But, yeah. So then, Sin Var Var Ev. I'm pronouncing it like Old Norse. I'm not supposed to. Oh, why don't we? Why why don't we even just totally bastardize it and just call Vrig D's Fury or Vrig D's Breath or one of these things that uh, that Jabber is is Vrig D's Fury or Vrig D's Breath um, best. Zinvarev. That almost sounds Russian. Zinvarev. Uh, Is he not the street fight, the Russian street fighter character? <laughs> Sorry. Fight! Yeah. <laughs> Fury would work. Right, okay, we're going to go Vrigdi's Fury. Right, so I looked up Irish. Vrigdi's uh, oh, Fury. Born. Because then this is another world building for the future is yeah. writing the story that go the legend of Vrigdi's oh, yeah, yeah. Fury. Um, so legendary pirate ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, the Dragonborn Fury. <laughs> I think technically it's a scaly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a black dragonborn scaly. Yeah. Jabber, get your terms <laughs> corrected, okay? Yes. I thought you were a lot more woke than that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true, uh, Dan. That would be that would be a lot of fun. Oh fuck like, yeah. And actually yeah. In inform the history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be a lot of fun. Woohoo! Captain Vrig D. I mean that that I could easily do like a two three shot, so it's deliberately super quick. There will be because we would want to try and frame the history a little bit, and I might do that myself. So there might be things that would happen that you know it, it wouldn't be like an ordinary one where you'd be there'd be a lot of um, ways around it because there'd be certain things that would happen. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, oh, see, no, don't, don't, honestly, Dan, do not, like, uh, you're far too um, self-deprecating. Uh, I love all this stuff, and this is why I think co collaboration with people is just so good. Um, yeah. I think it's really important that there's only ever two of us on screen, because then the conversation is, is more guided and directed. But, yeah. you know, I, I actually think that the ability of to have other folk in chat and stuff is superb with uh, putting in uh, ideas and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. So, I'm actually just going to put... Yeah. <laughs> just put a future stream. Future yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Future one shot or... Super. 
right, let's save that. Save, yep, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so. Hey. Hey, Doru. Um, we are, uh, I'll just go over that while this would be quite, quite a good time just to go over. Yeah. We're about an hour into, I think Tara and I sort of decided we'll probably do about two hours. Um, but we're, we were going to do a bit more on the bones of Kuhn, where the party currently is. And because you guys are in Diliati's well, we have started, and I think the way the stream is going, we will probably only actually get around to doing not much more, but in a good way. Um, but we're putting a lot more meat on the bones of Invorich, um, which is where... Um, the party had to come from uh, so sorry. no no I, I didn't hear anything so don't worry so we've kind of defined decided that this is a a future a, 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 a sorry a, a historic pirate encampment that has grown slowly into a village into a small town, bigger town, and now a city, and yep. has taken on a uh, legitimacy. Um, but what we've decided is that the government <clears throat> and the population are all like kind of legitimate, but it's got a bigger underbelly, um, black market, um, still pirates, thieves guild and stuff like that, that are still wanting the, the old days. <clears throat> And what we've kind of d decided is that, that sp although it's quite a mixed um, place race-wise, there's a lot more of the long-lived races, specifically elves, that are running the underbelly because there are still lots of them that are from the old days when all they did was piracy. And it's generations and generations of like the humans and the halflings that have, have sort of risen the rest of it to legitimacy. Um, so we quite like that um, and we just decided that the council chamber was um, known as Vregdi's Fury Vregdi is Black Dragon in Welsh and um, the council chamber has the hull of uh, the Vregdi's Fury as its roof and the main council member has their personal chambers in the captain's quarters. And we were just, as you came in, we were just deciding that that could either be a future world building stream where we dig very deep into the history, or we could potentially do a sort of one, two, three shot. And what happens in that um, would determine the history, um, which yeah. I quite like as well. So, uh, so is the ship like the whole. It's like it's ups it's upside down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah, the absolute the 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 hull is upside down. So it does look like a roof. Um. Obviously a a boat shaped yeah. roof. Um. But yeah. So it's not the whole ship that's sort of there. Yeah. Why write the history when you can live the history? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, pirates. I, th I thought you'd be happy. It's like yeah. I've been playing Sea of Thieves a lot with people. I don't know why. I, you know, like yeah. to be perfectly fair, um, it was actually Terror's idea, and, and I I jump on it and ran with it quite hard, but uh, I didn't bring the subject up. <laughs> Like I've been watching streams where people play as. People. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Indeed. Yeah. Uh, well, possibly, maybe that's what. Oh, I like. Or I might. I'll be add that. Uh, no, <laughs> the Kraken appears. Saved the town from ex-wife. <laughs> Brackets. Kraken. <laughs> uh, so absolutely yes um maybe that's exactly why it's such a legendary and that's the story it was it saved the town f uh, from attack from a kraken yeah. um and i obviously am quite happy for any excuse to get my tentacles on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean we're an eighteen plus stream, so you know. 
yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> i like the gif yeah. <laughs> um so i think we've done quite well with this because as i say the, what we're trying to do is broad brush strokes what about um the sea shields yeah, so um how do you see them um do we want to do too much for them at the moment just i don't know if we actually want to do any more than they are <laughs> i've just wrote in sea shields that the sea shields no nope. um city watch see. city watch uh oh we you can't see. see there you go thank you yeah city watch and um is it the army it's not really the army um what i was more meaning is it's not just in the city because uh, there are outposts um or maybe i'll just put oh um, uh, with outposts in checkpoints, tax checkpoints and stuff. Strategic positions. I'll just leave it at that. Um, but they could actually be absolutely checkpoints or yeah. tax and stuff like that. Um. Yeah. Uh, what is the symbol of the city? Like, do they have a like an icon, something that they they personify, like an emblem or whatever? I don't know. You tell me. I think so. I just don't know what. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see, we've put some value into uh, Vregdi and his voyage. Voyages. You obviously have a cultural importance to the city and the government type. Maybe maybe there are two symbols. There used to be like a more pirate-inspired symbol, but now it's a one more um, associated with Vregdi. Maybe... Um, yeah, maybe that is a thing that there used to be, say, a, uh, like a ship with a skull, uh, uh, emblem on the sail. That may have been the Gold Cog ships, Winston. Yeah. And then, yeah. Oh right! So the the ships, the ships wheel, yeah. each with the the, the twelve spars. That's yeah, that's a great yeah. idea. And then the centerpiece is the thirteenth member. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that, absolutely. I know I've bolded it, I'll unbold it in a second. <laughs> You're emboldening. Um here's my next question. Mm. Um what's the what's the um yeah, so that's like the spars spokes um would be another oh, way of saying okay, yeah, it. Yeah. Spokes. Um What's the old symbol? Because I think that the pirate guild will still use, and maybe that's something they'll tag on walls secretly to like yeah. mark safe houses and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Hmm. I don't know. Like, that could be nothing. Maybe it's uh, a black ship. 
Yeah, just a just a sim a simple black ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which also then it makes it easier for them to put on the wall. And have us tattoos, like the old uh, or secret tattoo. Yeah, so that oh, why did that change? It's also like, since this is just an outline, it's a fairly innocent symbol, in a way. It's... Right, I think we're talking about the guild a lot. I think we yeah. need to decide what the guild is called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we're going to have... So this is this is the this is the the pirates and uh, you know whether we want to call it a thieves guild whether we want to call it a pirate thing whatever but I think we're referencing it so much I think it needs a name yeah yeah, yeah. but then we're thinking that there's one group and not several smaller ones there will be several smaller ones but there'll be one major one that probably yeah, yeah. I what what I'm um thinking um as oh what sorry yeah, don yeah, you yeah. missed a bit what what we talked well i suppose that could be done as long I mean, as you receive council member you can still get elected yeah but what we had was that one was elected from the previous council of 12 to stay on as a sort of as the <clears throat> to maybe, for stalemates and stuff like that maybe it's like a recent uh, uh, institutional crisis for them. Like, it's never really happened before that somebody sticks around for several elections. And now this guy just kind of seems to roll back in because he's technically part of the council, yet not part of the council. And they don't have a solution for uh, that person always remaining. You know, like the old rules didn't have the idea of, you know, some guy always being left in the government body well in the old days it was just it was the strongest because it would be yeah. like you literally challenged somebody to combat uh, to to win over because the thing i i was I, the line of thought i was going is that i think going back to the previous point was i think there are going to be multiple thieves guilds and things like that but yeah. I, I think a name for the largest and the oldest one that we thought was going to be dominated by elves. Yeah. And they're almost like a shadow government of the black market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> And that's really, only, it's only really them that I'm thinking of name, that we need to name in the here and now. Yeah. Uh... Yes, like the Masks of Waterdeep. Yeah. Um, Hmm. Do we want them? But this guild would be like from back in the days. So even if it's majority elven, it wouldn't necessarily have always been an elven majority in that guild. No, and and, and actually, I think in the history, absolutely not. It was, it was a a, a full mix of the, the all the sort of main races. Yeah. And spe specifically here, I think humans, elves, halflings, and orcs, particularly on Kuin. Or the sort of dominant four, four species. Yeah. Maybe that's also one of those things as time passed. Like, these elven pirates always remained, and then they all sort of migrated to the largest and oldest group. Mm -hmm. And it's part of their power base that they're, like, the oldest one and have the oldest members. Um... <clears throat> Anybody got any um, Celtic language things to add? <laughs> That's, I mean, this it doesn't always have to be Celtic language. No. I mean, I mean, um, obviously, you know, to think about it, because I'm almost thinking like he called it something to do with the black ship, but like, mm. 
but maybe they changed it slightly so it was like renewing the black ship or remembering the black ship or raising the black ship or something like that because they want that to come back to the fore. Um, Keeping the black ship's line. Needs to be a bit more snappy, I'm afraid. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Ebon, yeah. Ebon is in ebony. And ivory. In together. In perfect harm. Uh. <sighs> I quite like that. Ebony's rise. Or ebon. Even mixing Don Bru and Dan's and have it like Council of Ebon's Rise. Yeah. So then, yeah, then they have their own council as well. Yeah, and it absolutely and it, and it mocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It and mocks a... the main one. Yeah. But there's no voting or anything. They're all just it's just the permanent members that were always yeah. there. And they're most okay. likely the oldest of the oldest of all the elves. <laughs> Jabber's got the right idea. Like, that is the name. That is the perfect name. Right, the Umbral Shadow Dark Council yeah. of Ebon's Rights. <laughs> <laughs> the Umbral Council. The Rising Council of Ebon Dark. Yep. <laughs> Maroon is Latin for dark. Um, is it? No, yeah. that's oh, actually yeah. where the word Morocco comes from. Because in Latin, what they called black people was maroons. I don't know the other word that people insist that they use. in Mauritania. Yes, Jabber's got the name as always. Sooty Boys. Well. <laughs> That's, see, XX Shadow Slayer X Council XX <laughs> 2420. Yeah. I'm sure he kills me every day when I play Battlefield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm fairly sure he's a Mountain Jewed up 14 year old from Kansas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Of course. <laughs> In every other game, he's We Demastered 2026. <laughs> Kansas, Japan? Yeah. No, Shadow, XX Shadow Slayer X Council XX 420, always American. Yeah. Yes, Kyle. <laughs> Kyle from <laughs> Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> he knows all the racial slurs. And I'm fairly sure he's aimbotting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why it's caffeine and chronic to try and bal find that sweet balance right in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it can be hyped up yet slow. Yeah, I mean, that's again an edge of Doritos. <laughs> Fine tuning Doritos, you need them. Uh, sorry. Uh, right, so what should we jump to next, do you think? Anything leap out at you? Um... Or anyone in chat? Did we have a sea god or god of the sea or something of water? Because I don't remember the gods. I just remember. Um, the... b -b 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 not specifically, um, but uh, oh, I better move this on another screen because there'll be things. Because we've had, I remember we had a list, but I don't remember the list. Do -do -do -do. So, 
Lisa will probably be or because they are just yeah. is, is is just nature. Um, uh, but I I would absolutely see C being part of part of that. Um, yeah. It's it's a lot. Just again, as we talked about earlier on, I just wanted. I wanted a pantheon of gods that wasn't too complex, so which is why I just went for five. Um, so they are very wide ranging in their spheres and influence, and there are many places where they overlap greatly. Um, mm -hmm. But that is deliberate because I'll, I'll be honest with you: when I first, when we all first started talking about world building, the thing that actually. Um, well, not so much scared to me but I felt a bit overwhelmed with was a pantheon because I didn't just I, it was one of these things that I felt that to make a world like this for a homebrew setting and to make it really feel live I really just didn't want to cut and paste the sort of either Roman or Greek pantheon or from yeah. sort of classic D&D &D, because then it, then everything else just feels like actually it's just a place within you know Forgotten yeah. Realms or something like that because everything's so so the same um, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is why I loved and I think you know the next sort of probably quite soon we should actually do other world building streams on the other four gods to build them out to the shh Dan shh Oh, only you know about that. Why does he know? About that? <laughs> he doesn't really. I'm just being stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, God of the Undead. Yeah, God, yes. <laughs> his symbol is a little, li little known piece of trivia. His, his full name is Steve Jobs. <laughs> I'm quitting this campaign. <laughs> <laughs> The moon, the moon nope. does, in some some bits, tend to sunlight look a little bit like a ripe apple. <laughs> yeah, with a bite taken out of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, he does. He takes people's credit for other people's moon work. The moon Fucking... is apparently new every year. It's new. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you have to buy Ooh, new undead moon yeah. version five point two. Yeah, ooh. It's only, only four thousand platinum. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, I've completely lost track of what we were doing there. I'm sorry. I quite like Religion. that. Religion, yeah. So I, th I think the, the other thing I was saying is yeah. So I think actually the other gods deserve world building streams in the in the not too distant yeah. future, so we can flesh them out as much as we did the veil. Um, absolutely, but um, that's why I thought <laughs> sort of cool was again. <laughs> Four thousand platinum, yeah. It's cheap. Yeah. You want to keep yeah, ahead. Yeah. You have to keep ahead of the game. Uh, B something. The name is the B. Brotha? No, shit. I forgot the name. Well, one would think that that's a majority majority religion if there's. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, there's a skeleton somewhere called Bill. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> um. Right. So we've got the population, we've got the symbol, we've got the basic. Well, what we've done before, which we sort of kind of did skip past, is because we've done we put government and political situation, and yeah. we've worked out it's a council of twelve with a thirteenth member, but we didn't really do anything about the political situation. So what is the political situation as we speak in terms of the legitimate edge of the city? Uh, you know, because I think, I think obviously Don Bruce said, said earlier on about you know political mass machinations and stuff like that. And yeah. really, what I'm asking is, is is it that sort of place, or is it a fairly m not mundane, but you know maybe there isn't a lot of political backstabbing and ma machinations, or or is there, or do does the the legitimate government leave that to the underbelly and they try and be collaborative and stuff and again i'm, I'm just posing questions rather than yeah. saying what what's what the, the the thing that sparked into my head is that there is 
not political backstabbing, but there's like almost like a system of open, not corruption since it's legal, but like well, you can buy my vote. You can buy the vote of all of these people. Mm -hmm. And it's completely legitimate. You can do that because some people don't care enough about it. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe, um, let's see, the political situation. There were probably a bunch of old, really rich families um, with ships to their names. Um, let's see, they would probably make a lot of money by trade as well. This is their big port town. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. That you buy, you buy votes. I mean, people can vote however they want, but they can also sell that that vote. I don't know if that's the, what you want to run with. Just reading what Don Bruton. Imagine they have a very right. piratey way of dealing with things, even when they are being legitimate. Like Johnny the woodworker hasn't been paying his rent. The council send him a black spot if the debt is not paid within twenty four hours. Billy dies or has to escape. Um, I think. I think the Council of Ebon's Rise definitely act like that. Yeah. What, what we discussed before you came, Dombro, was that the, the, the sort of legitimate edge is trying to absolutely... We were trying to sort of put it in terms of we probably all have warriors and vagabonds and Vikings and all sorts in our history. And what we were wondering is, is how many cycles of um, different generations sort of breaks that and, and lifts it up. And that's why we had the under... Um, well, yes, but absolutely they have. But I think what, one of the things which we haven't answered, which this comes back to, is, is how much time has passed. So how separate are the human halfling sort of main government from those times and how soft have they become and the, obviously some of the elves who could be 1500, 2000 years old, they're still some of the originals. So I think that's really what, what we're sort of asking is to see see how, how things are. Maybe that's like the cultural way that most people do it but the government wants to fight against that. Like okay. murdering people really harms things so the government has a different way of doing that. Yeah, but we, we have to remember, you have to remember that after what the, the veil stream, people's beliefs are that death, you know, is not, um, yeah. is not the end. Because they, and this is what we've already, we've already specified that justice in this world, there is a heavy slant to the death penalty because that's yeah. sending the soul to the veil to be judged and reincarnated or not um, because they've sort of that's one of the overriding religious beliefs is it's not for people to judge other people's actions it's for other people to send them off to the veil for the veil to do the judging yeah, and, and, yeah. and they're really just the uh, the peace um Yeah, the yeah. thing things started as pirates, but we're long, long, long past that. Absolutely long, long. You know, it's still, but there is still going to be an influence there. No, the the idea that we have is that it was a pirate city, and from what I understand, we never thought of it as a like political uh, or naval. Like they they weren't overthrown. It was that they grew and grew, and then the pirate element was not the majority population Cause, anymore. Because they, they started it, making more money from just trading and things like that, and it, it, it made the effort of piracy not worthwhile for the majority. Yeah. Um, and so they sort of migrated in, and now they're still struggling with trying to make the... Uh, have a legitimate government and being respected amongst other cities as a trade partner and... and having their own navy and everything else. Yeah. Now I don't mean I don't mean like it's not a huge navy, it's probably only like half a dozen ships or something like that, because a city of two to three hundred thousand people is not going to be able to afford like a massive gigantic navy, but 
And mm. but uh, you know, maybe maybe the political situation is that they have created a uh, like we've talked about the guy who hunts for the thieves kill and that he is like he's a high ranking member of of the uh, the council of twelve yeah yeah he's a high ranking member of the council but also the guild did we give a name to the guild well I, I put that um, place setter of council of Ebon Rise Oh no, yeah, Evan Rice. Maybe he could possibly even be the thirteenth seat. Yeah, but I was thinking maybe also they have a uh, like a task force or something made to root out these people. He's okay. ahead of that group as well, and that then this. So is... this this gives him the the public persona of he's being like super harsh, trying to weed out the, the, the council, but all the time he's back channeling them. So when his task force go in, they're always just too late. Deliberately. Yeah. Yeah. Or they, they strike a real target, but it's a target that supplants some of his power. Or it, it hits a rival group yeah. uh, and, and, and cements the power of the, the Ebon's Rise. Yeah. Uh, but then this unit's focus then is also a anti-corruption uh, uh, or whatever. It's AC-12. Have you been watching Line of Duty? No. <laughs> it's, a very, it's, a very, it's, it's a very popular British sort of detective show, but it's about an anti-corruption unit within the Metropolitan Police in London. And AC-12 is, is one of the anti-corruption, is the particular, because it's just anti-corruption 12. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, there's like five or six series of it, and it's very, very well written and acted. It's, it's really good. Cool. So, if we're talking about a task force of sea shields, uh, anti-corruption... Um, yeah. We can't see what you're typing. Oh, there we go. See? You're getting better. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, yeah, task force CTO anti corruption. And then it also becomes so then it's basically an important part of their work is to create this uh, legitimized base for the government as well. Because they're sort of they're rooting out the corruption that makes them seem less legitimate. So they're a very important deal in the city. So what are they called then? Uh, let's see now. Would we go with a magical name, or who would we go with a very just, descriptive name? It's just, just it's one of these things. Is just throw it out there and then let chew the, to let, to, so we can chew the fat. Whenever we're talking about names, it's very seldom that we ever have Kaz, Kion Assembly of Sea Shields. Kion, is that the the whole island then? Because we're only talking about a like a city state. Yes, it's only because it, yeah, because <clears throat> Kuan itself is between four cities and it's sort of carved up between them and whilst they have an, uh, uh, an alliance they are not a country um, they are all individual city states um, uh, I know Dan has mentioned it before but there was because Raid a Dragon in Welsh because I'm thinking maybe they picked the name of let's say uh, what was his name Vredi had like a legal officer on the ship that dealt with internal disputes so that captain would captain and be brave and then would have like a, uh, a like a law man on the ship and so they would name themselves after that uh, dragonborn could be maybe a cousin of his or something 
Maybe. I don't know. But uh, Vrag Vragdy was the ship's name, wasn't it? Rather than Oh and, I, and, I, and whilst I it whilst it, Yeah, that was that was the ship. But it was called Vrag D because Vrag D meant black dragon and he was a black dragonborn, but I don't think oh, okay. I don't think that was actually his name. Oh, okay, okay. I thought that was It just it, it okay. just sort of it, it was just from the fact he was a black dragonborn. We we never yeah, actually yeah. gave him a name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Because then you've got a black dragon born called Black Dragon, which is a bit, <laughs> it's a bit, it's a bit much. <laughs> yeah. A dog um, called dog. Yeah, a dog called dog. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what would they call themselves? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I mean, why not? Why not? Did what he collect skin them? and like make a suit out of it? <laughs> oh, imagine Silence of the Lamb, but with Dragon Boy instead. Yeah. I ate his kidneys with some fava beans. And a nice and Chianti. A nice but he was human, so it's not really cannibalism. What is it, cannibalism? <laughs> it would be, though. <laughs> As we're talking about cannibalism, Richard recommends the uh, the stream. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, task force of sea shapes. Let's see. I mean, if nothing if nothing jumps out, then it's not it's not um, necessary to to do it just now. No. Do we jump to? Are there any other organizations other than the Sea Shields and the Council of Ebon Rise? I was thinking religion. I mean, at least you would know. I forget in the name, but it would probably be the majority of religion. Probably not have a lot of power in the city, but. I see most of the people of the world. Not like it's not like I am a follower of this, I am a follower no, no, of that. Yeah. It's more they sort of just go through all of the religions when they are appropriate to them at any one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um obviously the religion of Lux will be particularly powerful because it um it goes through the black hull. Hmm, I quite like that. Oh, I do like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea, yeah. Instead of the Council of the Ebon Rise, the Black Hull. Yeah. And then it also mimics what their symbol is, the outline yeah, yeah, yeah. of the black ship. Exactly, yeah. No, I like that a lot. We can't see. Uh, 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 I'm just changing. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've never been there, but I can imagine. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what I was saying is, <clears throat> so although, yes, there'll be churches, and yes, some will have more money than not, absolutely, we were talking about dodgy dealings and graffiti, yeah, they would yeah, yeah. have a tattoo of it to, to in somewhere that was easy to hide, but also easy to show, so you were a member. I see, like, safe houses and things in the back alleys being marked with these to, to so people know where to go, even if they, they're not actually from the, 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 the city themselves. Um, yeah, absolutely. I like that. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I, I see Lux as being, in most places, being the most... Um, the most... regularly um, adhered to religion purely because it's medicine, it's childbirth yeah. their clerics are often like the midwives and things like that, so they're mm -hmm. things that you know a lot of people will need in their life, whereas some of the other ones maybe they could go their whole life without worrying, like the nature the nature god Bior is going to be um sailors and farmers and things like that but if you live yeah. in a city you might not 
ever bother praying to, to, to BR because it doesn't affect you very often. Yeah. Um, that that sort of thing. Um, but I don't see people like living their whole lives with, I belong to this religion, unless they are actually part of the clergy. Yeah. Uh, I'm or some so. mental faction like Jabber. Yeah. <laughs> And then in the game as well. Yeah. The uh, <laughs> import and export. Uh-huh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so they are Traders Guild. Yeah. Uh, I think there's going to be a Shipwrights Guild as well. Yes, yes. I think other cities are going to come here. Um... Yeah, possibly, Dan, actually, yeah. I mean, I, I, we've definitely sort of talked about the fact that some religions will perform rites and rituals that are under the auspices of another god if it is appropriate to them at their time. Um, yes, absolutely, absolutely. I like that, Dombro, as well, yeah. Um, but... That's for let's let's not get too sidetracked because I think we're going down a whole different topic for like another stream. Um, I think. Uh, yeah. Any any other? So we've got the Black Hull, we've got the Traders Guild, Shipwrights Guild, uh, Farmers Guild, maybe. I don't think in the city. To be honest, mm. I I think. Yeah. I think there'll be another small town or village where that sort of thing is in the farmland um, to the to the dawnward. Um, crafters guilds. Yeah, I mean crafters. That's fine. Yeah, because they're like blacksmiths and whatnot. Yeah, because they'll be needing things like that for making hooks and like stainless steel eyes for ropes and anchors yeah. and all. Yeah, there'll be a lot of that sort of thing. Um, right, well, that's Cannoneers Guild. Tailors. Tailors. Yep, because um, they would probably be yep. it. Tailors Guild. And I think a Magic Guild is probably yeah. quite a good. The Baker's Guild. Let's let's not go down into the minutiae. The, uh, the the baker, the butcher, and the candlestick maker. <laughs> um, so from crafters, we could change crafters just to artisans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that can actually include, uh, and yeah, absolutely right. Then we don't need a tailor's guild. Because basically all of that is under the Artisans Guild. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's see, the Black Hull would also be the Assassins Guild. Uh, yes. Uh, let's see, what other type of... Place where the gods aren't so pervasive, the scientists, magicians would thrive there potentially. Yeah. yeah. Um, do we want a science guild, or is that part of the magician, the magic guild, or do do? And that's something that I've not really established in this world. Is you know, is that a schism, a science v magic, or are they actually very closely related? I I, I tend to that way myself. Actually, that science and magic are actually the same thing. Um, I've played too much Thief to have. Don't you bring thing. science into my fantasy? Yeah, I played too much Thief where you have religion and magic on one side, and then science on the other. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 it's kind of exactly why I pose that question is because we we do kind of want to try and mix things up a little bit. So I actually like that. Actually, science and tinkering and stuff like that, and making gizmos is actually just part cannons. of the magics guild i think cannons maybe cannons is part of that yeah i mean i don't know i mean we could also have a three-way split then between 
religion, uh, tinkering, and magic. Nah, I think in I, I'm going to put the magic guild. I'm going to put includes tinkering and yeah. and which then allows for the possibility of techno mages. <laughs> no, there shall be no techno mages. Oh, I love techno mages. Yeah, absolutely, Dan. That could be one of the districts. All the intelligent people are. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Or it could even actually have a guild district. And it's all of the guilds. Yeah. Obviously, apart from the Black Hill, because it's not like known to most people. But um, it would be the type of thing that they've had to make, that they had to force all the guilds into one district. Otherwise, they all just begin competing for space. Then it's like a warehouse just for cannons. Well, I, 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 what I see is you've got the guilds in one district, the sort of administrative yeah. shitey bits, and then you've got the actual traders doing the stuff as a second district. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah. So then you've got like a town centre district, you've got guild district, traders district, and by traders that can be magic shops and it can be... Yeah. All of the shipwrights, the chandlers, um, the rope makers, the sail maker you know, all of that sort of stuff. That'll probably be a very large district in comparison to some of them. Um, that might be one of the, the things um, that's in the political thing, because there could be a tension. Um, because large, well, large districts only get two council members. And small districts the same. Yeah. So then it's this the the rich, expensive living smaller district with a smaller population, but they have the same influence of two council people than yeah. you know the 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 masses. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm trying to edit on stream rather than on the document again. <laughs> uh, Yeah. I'll just mean um, what he said. I like the idea of having one of the guilds having a place in the guild district. That's just a storefront and their main house is outside the city secluded somewhere. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Like they would probably also have. Yeah, that would be also like. Mm -hmm. Dilapidated. Uh, just means run down and, and stuff. That's a really good word, dilapidated. I, mean, I was thinking that as well, Dan. I, it kind of would make uh, make it work for magic and science. One would also think that like individual villages outside of the city would have the guild elements in them as well. Because they could, if it was magic and the science, they could have like teleportation circles, and yeah. it's this sort of wrecked old thing. But then there's a false wall, and they can just go pew 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 backwards and forwards. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It could, yeah, it could even throw them onto the island to the north. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, Absolutely. Would be a thing. Like, the island, is, it, it's seen as the far away area, but that's, like, where the guilds are basically doing, like, most, like, a lot of work over there. Yes, like, people don't see the inevitable explosions. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, imagine that... I have created the fireball spell! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck your temple. The, uh... <laughs> like, imagine that on the island, like the mages guild would have like lots of cannons just ready made. And so then, if they were to sell some, they would never like show a warehouse filled with cannons. They would all be on the island, so they could always keep prices as high as possible. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! You got a, that's a tall order, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, we'll see. Those damnable mages still haven't fixed their fallen sign. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But it's it's actually part of it as well is a pretense of weakness, so they're just left alone. Yeah. Ugh. That's cool. Okay. <laughs> We'll well, any other cannons work. Yeah, and, and I, I know we've got a lot of meat to put on them, but I, I'd like to skip on um, because kind of only got sort of another 10, 15 minutes left of when I plan to stream to. And what I would like to do is notable persons. Ah, yes. Sure. 
shambolic? Is that sham and symbolic? Mixed? No, sham shambolic is it's like um they're a, a disaster at organizing things. Everything's oh. like you know like Oh no. Yeah, quite yeah, quite often. Oh god, I've knocked it over again. It might be a bit yeah. sort of dyspraxic and you know fucking hell, you're a total shambles, mate. Sort yourself out. Oh uh, yeah. We've invented a new cannon and just explodes. Oh yeah. thanks to the drawing board. Bumbling belovedness, yes, it could be. Ah uh, yes. Uh notable persons. Should we have that guy? The thirteenth guy, the task force leader. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, ooh. So who's the current thirteenth councilman? Now we've portrayed him as a very serious and very uh, uh, driven person so far. Well, we're not, it doesn't even have to be a man. No, no, no. It uh, probably does have to be an elf, though. Um, mm, yeah. It probably has to be in quite an old elf. Ooh. What if we have that it's an old elf who had all the tattoos and everything, uh, but then sort of, you know, in 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 an unnecessary and like grotesque sort of casting off of this old violent history, sort of removed all the tattoos, like carved it off, and like just to show how dedicated he is to really make it believable that he, uh, him or her is so against the Black Hall. And so, like, this, like, uh, patch of, uh, like, regenerated skin as, like, a mark of, uh, dedication. <laughs> does, does the person wear a tutu? Well. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know, I prefer the tutu. A tutu of dedication. <laughs> uh... What about this is actually just uh, they've got a magical item and the whole thing's actually an illusion? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I do like Ebon Hill. Hmm. Because then that, yes, that's yeah. And Ebon Hill's like it, their, their black hole name. Hmm, yeah. Than the people would say. Maybe Sybil, they would be like, oh, Sybil the Righteous. Or like, yeah. We all know Sybil, yeah. And maybe other council uh, members and the Sea Shields have heard this Ebon Hilt name and are desperately oh, looking yeah. for them, but they don't know it's actually their boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Evan Hill, the one who knocks, yeah. <laughs> you can't help him there, storming has taken over, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, so, Sybil to me is a female name, but is it a female? Yeah. I would say so. female elf cool yes is it then she would also be one of the older ones yes like sort of high ranking yeah very old yeah uh... previous fool pirate yeah yeah I don't think we need to do like the whole twelfth council, twelve council no. members at the moment. I think they are doing at the moment. Yeah. Um, what, would also what about head of the sea shields? Mm. Yeah, I'm kind of almost thinking that, that like to mimic the sea shields, also a hull. Um, they could have been a young member of Rig D's crew. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Now that she has, she held the position of thirteenth member before. Let's come back to that another day. But yeah. hold that—you note that down somewhere. Sure. 
because now she's living in the ship that she used to be uh, fighting. I'll put that into my ideas for the ribbon. And as a fierce combatant, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she was on the famous ship. And, like, a force of will like no other. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've already put has harsh demeanor, is very persuasive, and uses threats very well. Yeah. Fierce combatant. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, um, head of the sea shields. And what I, I was going to say was... Can't see. I was going to say... What if they were... Their title was like Barnacle or something like that? <laughs> Very. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's see. A barnacle is like a seaweed, right? No, it's a it's a tiny wee crustacean that like like it goes on to uh, whales' heads yeah. and um. Yeah, it's a little thing. But it, it, it's the reason I kind of thought is they're very strong. They're very tough. They're very defensive. And then limpet yeah. is a is another sort of type of a bigger one of the same thing. Goofy for a title though. Ugh, I, yeah, maybe. That's why I'm just chucking it out there. Crab. They are essentially shelled leeches. Yeah, you're kind of right. Uh, the synonyms for that was bloodsucker. But they don't suck blood. They they filter um, water. They water. Eat. They eat plankton. Um, let's see. <clears throat> well, let's let's think. Who who is this? Who is this? Is it a man or a woman? And what race are they? Should we throw in an orc far away from home? So someone like with a similar history to Grash. Yeah. And like this is the. Uh, you know, except that he decided that he didn't want to come back. He became. He showed skill and then felt like, should I go back up there for whatever reason when I can just stay here and be. Well, I mean, this is. That's already canon that I've written in that um, there is a big tension in the orcish world that more and more of their people are. Um, I'm not typing anything. Okay. Um, more and more of their people are it's, and again it's to, to kind of mimic what happened a little bit with Native Americans is more of their people sort of let go of the old ways and started to you know edge towards um, what was modern civilization yeah. um, in inverted commas so that's something I, I'd already kind of had in my mind that was happening in the world so it kind of fits that um, yeah. and then also he's the head of the sea shield he has in, 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 a, in a tribal sense he has gotten a lot of glory he is the head of an army oh yeah in a sense mm -hmm. so then he would be the type of thing then that they would really hate because he becomes this prominent person somewhere out there like he is an impressive figure in his own right yes absolutely I'm just trying to remember which one was the view that. Yes. Sorry, I am just trying to um, think. So he is an orc of the. No, 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 he's not. No, I'm not going to have him. I think he's he's one of the snow ghosts. 
So he uh, comes from the icy tundra. Um, he has travelled a long, long way. Um, they're, they're also known as the White Orcs of Or Or uh, White Orc. So, like, are they? Yeah, they're white, like very, very pale. Yes, the way Dombro and I have sort of talked about it before is that um, that the all the orcs are kind of traditional green, but there there are sort of colorings, and a lot of this yeah. is more about tribal paints and stuff like that. Um, it's um, why they get the red, the blue, the black, the white. Um, yeah. Is is more about there. Um, I just it, the reason I have to say Don Bro is the reason I want to um, make him one of them is they are one of the orc tribes I'm desperate to really flesh out because I just uh, love the fucking sound of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but so then the white is tribal painting. Yes, and he might not. He may or may not actually still adhere it. You know, he may have completely yeah. given it up in total but uh, uh, but that's for us to decide so what 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 do we want to call him orcish name orcish name uh, uh, oh, damn it orcish name Cartagon. if he still adorns himself with tribal paints he would be breaking Rikala all right, so there he is. So he can't possibly be uh, adorning himself with tribal paints. And what's Rakal? That is what Grash is going through. Oh. Part of. That's a bit but simplified. Would he care about breaking it? I think the the, ar the argument there is if, if he's left, uh, you wouldn't be... Why would he bother with the tribal paints if he's not going oh, back? Right. You know, if you're giving up that that life, it, it might be a deliberate shedding of that. Yeah. Sorry, I don't, bro. I'm getting the two of them mixed up. It kind of would, Dan. Except Neptune will be meaningless yeah. in this world because it's a god that doesn't exist. Synonym for C. Well, no, we're trying to, at the moment, we're trying no, no, to give yeah. the, the sea sheep... Just to, just, it doesn't have to be his title at the moment, just his name. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean... Like, what his names? Sargrandal. Uh. Mm -hmm. So how are you spelling that, then? No. Sag... Sa eh, Sagran. Yeah. And then I guess. And then Dahl, I don't know. Um... How yeah. about spelling it like that? Sagran. Dahl. Or will I put yeah. another apostrophe in? Dahl. <laughs> Dahl. Dahl. Korgunda, Korgun. Uh, Take the H out. Needs to be more bare. Okay. Duh. Duh. Cool. The other thing, if you ever want orc goblin names, just play Shadow of Mordor. There's freaking millions of them, but they're all like long, more long-winded, and it's like. <laughs> Grachthar the sharp broken toothed and things like uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine got stuck with Tug Lee Atelier. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, he sounds more like a hitman for the mob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely tribal. But also again, mimicking um as I say slight bit of, of Celtic but also a slight bit with the orcs especially Native American yeah. I could absolutely see an orc with a name like you know 
um, morning mist or you know something sort of more slightly more um, lyrical um, in name as well um, yeah. or that that may even be a secret tribal name Scattershield yeah. mm. uh, I th- that sounds more like a dwarven clan name to me yeah. I like that I think that'll go in the, that's going in the memory banks yeah. <laughs> um, well, we did get through a lot, um, but I must admit I am starting to die, uh, <laughs> focus-wise. Um, so I think we may bring things because we said two hours, and we've just gone over the two hours. So, um, yeah. Unless there's anything that you or anyone in chat is desperate to deal with at the moment, I'll give you all a few minutes or a few seconds to 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 shout if there's anything else. If not, I think I might call this here um, as. I just you know. say add a category for important historical events, and then we'll figure that out later. History. Already done. Oh, okay. No, yeah, that's true. I missed the gift, damn it. Thank you, Rist Bot. Victory. <laughs> oh, it's a victory. Yes. So, um well, <clears throat> this has been episode two of our world building, and we will get more um scheduled in the future because we do very much enjoy them. Yeah. Hopefully we will be back next week um with episode four of Patchwork, making sure everybody is okay. Um, I will be riding on a high because I am at Tabletop Scotland which is a tabletop RPG convention that is happening in my hometown next Saturday so I may also be tired but I'm very excited (laughs) uh, because at that I am getting to play in a three and a half hour alien RPG session which be my first taste of the full game Um, so I'm very, very excited about that. Late night one. It. Hmm? I want it. I want yeah. to play. Absolutely. Um, and it's I think it's a it's a special enc- it's not the same encounter that I've been given as part of the pre order. It's a special encounter that Free Legan have written specially to go out to people at conventions as a taster. Uh, I think this was first run at Gen Con was the first place it was run uh, a few weeks ago so um, it would be quite good I'm quite looking forward to it I think it's set in a mining colony somewhere out in the sticks <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely um, so yeah uh, if you've enjoyed this uh, we are Saviors RPG and this is usually our main D&D stream um, at 4pm PST on a Sunday um, and you can follow us on all the usual thing I can see that our Discord and our Twitter and everything have been linked on chat and they are underneath they are the best way to keep up to date um, and we do also occasionally have um computer game streams as well as this uh, world building as well and we are most recently been diving into Sea of Thieves um, are we live with that again on Tuesday Don Brew? I couldn't remember if we'd rescheduled it 100% or not I want to, right okay um, I must admit Wednesday might be easier for me this week but if you guys are doing it on Tuesday then that would be fine uh, just I have something on Tuesday morning that uh, I kind of need to have a be very uh, well rested, uh, but we can figure it out. But as again, that's what we say. Uh, keep an eye on our Twitter, and we'll keep you up to date with that. And other than that, um, Dan's got a, a, a charity stream to moderate. Well, very well done, uh, Dan. Uh, doing good work. Right. Well, I I will say cheerio and see you the next time. Bye.